Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to look at what is cost, volume, profit analysis and how is it used. Basically, cost, volume, profit analysis is basically a model, not only one model, it's several models that enable managers to make a decision or to see how changes in cost, how changes in volume, how changes in prices affect net income or operating income. So that's basically what it is. It's a model. So managers want to know how profit will change as units sold or product or service change or cost change overall. Cost means fixed cost or variable cost. Okay. So it's managers like to use what if analysis. They want to know what if we change certain things, what would happen to our profitability? What are the possible outcomes of different decisions that they so they can make the best one? Now, cost volume profit be, uh, cost volume profit analysis Im implies that we know how cost behave. Remember, we have two type of cost behavior. We have variable cost, and we have fixed cost, and also we have obviously mixed cost, which is part variable and part fixed. For the purpose of this analysis, we cannot use missed cost, mixed cost. So for this purpose, our cost has to be variable or fixed. Now in the real world, most costs are mixed. So what do we need to do? We need to break the cost into a variable component and a fixed component, which we will see how we will, we will see how we break down the mixed cost into a variable and a fixed component later on. But for the purpose of CVP, we're going to be working only with either a variable cost or a fixed cost. So I'm going to show you how to use this CVP formula, not how to break down mixed cost. That will be a separate, a separate recording. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, how we came up with this information. So I would like to show you the formulas. I'd like to derive the formula. Rather than show you the formula and explain it, I would like to derive the formula. This way you could always go back and derive the formula yourself. So let's go ahead and start with a simple equation that no one can argue with, and that's profit or operating income. Now, when I use profit, um, I can use also operating income. So if I said profit or operating income, so I'm just going to use, I'm going to put right here, operating income, and I'm going to abbreviate it as OI. Okay, so operating income or profit, okay, because sometimes they use operating income, some, in certain textbook they use profit, equal to revenues minus expenses. And I hope no one can disagree with this statement. Let's uh, expand this formula a little bit. We can say operating income or profit. Again, I'm just going to use operating income equal to revenues minus. I'm going to break my expenses into variable cost and fixed cost. All what I did is I took expenses and we know that expenses could be variable or it could be fixed and I broke them down. Let me break this formula down a little bit further. I can say operating income or profit equal to revenue equal to the selling price SP. So I'm just going to abbreviate here. Selling price equal to SP. So SP times quantity. So how do you how do you determine your revenue? Well, I determine revenue by taking my selling price, multiplying it by my quantity. I will get my revenue. So selling price times quantity, that's equal to revenue. So I really did not change anything. All what I did is I broke down revenue. Then I can say variable cost, a variable cost is also variable cost times quantity will give me the total variable cost and the fixed cost is fixed cost. So basically all what I did is I took this formula and I broke it down. And this is an important formula. So this formula is I would say a good formula to solve any problem with cost volume profit analysis operating income equal to selling price times the quantity minus the variable cost times the quantity minus the fixed cost now in certain problems you might be giving pieces various pieces but you have to put this formula together now let's break this formula further we can say operating income equal to notice what we can do here we can factor q okay we can factor q so let's go ahead and factor the quantity we would say Q quantity times selling price minus the variable cost. All what I did is I factored the Q out. I factored the Q out minus fixed cost. Now guess what? Selling price, I'm going to 
selling price minus variable cost, I'm going to call it something called the contribution margin. So I'm going to abbreviate contribution margin SCM. Well, what I can say is this. Operating income equal to quantity times contribution margin minus fixed cost. All what I did is I called this this factor here, selling price minus variable cost, equal to the contribution margin. Okay? So let me rearrange the formula a little bit, just to kind of to see what's going to happen. Let's assume I want to uh, move the profit to the other side. Okay? So I want to move the profit to the other side. All what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to say minus quantity times selling price minus variable cost. Or I can just say contribution margin if I want to. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's use, since I'm done with the contribution margin, equal to minus operating income minus fixed cost. All what I did is I tried to isolate Q, the quantity, on one side of the equation. Now, all what I have to do is multiply by negative 1 both sides of the equation. So if I multiply by negative 1, I would say quantity times contribution margin equal to operating income plus fixed cost. Now, if I want to isolate quantity altogether, I, I would divide both sides by contribution margin. If I divide both sides by contribution margin, let me do so. Contribution margin. So basically, the, the contribution mar margin canceled. I have quantity equal to operating income, which is profit, plus fixed cost divided by contribution margin. This is another important, so this is, this formula is derived from this, but this is basically in a sense, this is a shortcut, shortcut. So basically if I want to find my quantity, let's assume I want to find my quantity, um, how many units should I sell? Let's just quick example. For example, if I want to know how many unit do I need to sell to earn a certain profit. So I know what my profit is. So let's assume I want to earn a profit of, just kind of, I'm going to make up some numbers, a profit equal to 5,000. Okay, if I want to make a profit equal to 5,000. And I know my fixed cost, let's assume my fixed cost equal to 3,000. And I'm selling each unit selling price equal to ten dollars and there's a variable cost for each unit to six dollars okay so what do i need to do well my selling price minus my variable cost will give me a contribution margin equal to four dollars okay so this is my contribution margin so in the denominator i will have four my target profit i want to make five thousand dollar of profit so it's my my operating income i want to make a profit this much and i want to cover my fixed cost, obviously. My fixed cost is $3,000. Now I can find how many units do I need to sell under those circumstances. So basically, I have to take 8,000 divided by 4. Let me just get pull my calculator out and perform this calculation real quick. So basically, 5,000, which is my target profit plus my fixed cost, equal to 8,000 divided by $4. That's going to give me, I need to sell 2,000 units. Now, going, uh, going, uh, working from this formula now, if you, uh, uh, what, you can, what I can find out is what if I, how much do I need, how many units do I need to break even? To break even means I'm not going to make any profit. Make the 5,000 equal to zero. How many units do I need to sell? Well, that's easy. That's $3,000. All what I have to do is cover my fixed cost divided by four. Okay, so let me see how many units do I need to do. 3,000 dollar divided by the contribution margin of four i need to sell 750 units to break even this is my break even point so this is also another shortcut formula if i want to find my break even points in terms of unit i take my fixed cost i divide it by contribution margin so this is how i'll find it now if i want to find out what is my break even in dollar amount all what i have to do is take the quantity whatever the 750 in this situation times the selling price will give me the break even 
in dollars. So in this situation, I'm, I said I'm gonna sell 750 and the selling price is $10. So my break even in dollar amount is 7,500. So this is my, uh, my sales to break even. Now, all the numbers that I am plugging here, you could go back up here and use this formula here and you will see you'll get to exactly what you need to get. For example, if you need to get a break, break even of, what would we, if you want to get a profit of five, what was the profit, the first example I gave, the profit of 5,000, well, you could take the profit and fill this out and it will equal to 5,000, okay? Now, there's an important concept here with the break even point. I want, I want, to, I want you to see it in a, a picture or, or a graph type of thing. In this, in, this, in this example, we are saying my selling price equal to $10, my variable cost equal to, I made it six, okay? 10 minus six equal to $4. This is my contribution margin. So here's what's gonna happen. And my fixed cost, my fixed cost for the purpose of this example was $3,000, $3,000. Here's what's gonna happen. Think, think of a fixed cost as something I have to complete before I make any profit. So before I make any profit, I have to cover my fixed cost. So the company will have to cover their fixed cost. What's gonna happen is this. Every time I sell one unit, so if I sell one unit, if I sell one unit, so one unit means what? 10 minus six equal to a contribution margin of four. Every unit I sell, it's gonna rain down into this bucket. So I have $4 here. Then I would sell another unit, I'll have $4 here. I'm gonna sell another unit, have $4 here. So what I have to do is I have to fill out that bucket. So I have to fill out that bucket with profit in order to cover because this bucket is a $3,000 bucket. Okay, now once I, and I figured out, I need to sell how many units to break even, I need to sell 750 units. So once I have 750 units, and let's, let me show it to you. Once I sell 750 units, making $4 each, 750 times $4, and voila, it's $3,000. So once I rain enough $4 into this bucket, and I need to rain 750 of them, now, the 751, once I get to the additional one unit that I sell, okay, the $4, it's going to fall outside this pocket and it's going to become profit. So for every additional unit I sell above the 750, it's going to be outside this bucket because I already completed this bucket, which is, which is representing my fixed cost, and it becomes a, a, uh, a, uh, a profit what if I want to find my break even break even in terms of a dollar amount not in terms of unit we already find in terms of unit I already find out I need to sell um, I need to sell 750 units to break even which is I took the fixed cost divided by the contribution margin what if I want to find the dollar amount well I, I can take 750 times 10 because I know the selling price. What if I don't? What if I don't know the selling price? Well, here's what's going to happen: to find the break even in a dollar amount, you take your fixed cost divided by something called CM percentage or CM contribution margin. Now, how do you find your contribution margin percentage or contribution margin ratio? You'll do so by taking your contribution margin divided by the selling price. And for our purposes, our contribution margin is point contribution margin is four dollars which is 10 minus 6 selling price minus the variable cost divided by the selling price of ten dollars my contribution margin percentage equal to 40 percent or 0.4 now to find my break even in dollar amount i'll take my fixed cost which is three thousand dollar divided by 0.4 not four dollars 0.4 or 40 percent let me do that 3,000 divided by 0.4, that's 7,500. Yes, that's $7,500 amount, which confirms my initial my initial estimate, not, not my initial calculation, that I need 750 units times $10 will give you selling of 7,500. So the, to, to, to compute your break even in terms of sales, you need to sell 7,500 worth of goods in order to in order to uh, break even now can you can can you can you confirm this can you confirm this well let's see let's see if we can confirm this so I want my operating income to be zero 
Okay, let's see if that's the case. My what I'm saying, my revenues will be seven thousand five hundred. Okay, what is my variable cost? Well, my variable cost. If I'm selling seven hundred and fifty, seven hundred and fifty units. If I'm selling seven hundred and fifty units, because I need to generate revenues of seven thousand five hundred, my variable cost is six dollar per unit. Seven fifty times six. That's equal to four thousand five hundred. That's my variable cost minus my fixed cost, which is three thousand. Guess what? Plus seven thousand five hundred minus forty five hundred minus three thousand will give me. I just confirm it will give me an operating income of of zero, which is the break even point. Which is the break even point. Now, when, once again, you have to know your variable cost. You have to know your fixed cost. One more thing you want to know about this formula is: What if they told you we want an after tax profit? Okay, uh, for example. Uh, what was our profit here for the purpose of this example? We wanted a profit of 5,000. What, what, what did I do here? A profit of 5,000 after taxes. I want a profit of 5,000 after taxes. Well, what do I have to do then? I want this after taxes, after I pay my taxes. So what I have to do, I have to gross this 5,000. How do I gross the 5,000? So how much? So this is 5,000 after taxes. So this this could add some complication to this. Well, well, after taxes, I have to know my tax rate. Let's assume my tax rate for the purpose of this example equal to 30%. So what do I do? How do I find out my, how much do I need to, uh, what, what, what should my profit be before I pay the taxes, okay? Well, if it's 5,000, then I have to take 5,000 divided by, which is 5,000 is target profit, which is, this is the, this is my, well, don't worry about this. 5,000 divided by 1 minus the tax rate. What is 5,000? 1 minus 0.3 equal to 0.7. So let's do it. So 5,000 divided by 0.7 equal to approximately $7,142. What does that mean? It means my profit, my profit now, my target profit, my target profit, should be 7142 okay to get a profit to get uh, to to make a profit of to make a profit of of 5000 okay to make a profit of 5000 simply put what i have to do now rather than in the formula rather than plugging in in the formula here what did we plug in we plug in 5000 the initial formula we plug in here 5000 Okay, we plug in here 5,000. Now, rather than plug in 5,000, I have to plug in this figure, 7,142. Well, 7,142 will give me an after-tax profit of 5,000. Okay, because I have to pay taxes. Therefore, let's let's compute it. Obviously, now, if, if I have to sell more units, obviously, you remember, I... I need to sell 2,000 units to make 5,000. If I want that 5,000 after taxes net, then the formula is different. Then 7,142, that's my uh, profit before taxes, plus the fixed cost was 3,000 divided by the contribution margin, which was 4. As I told you, it's gonna, it should be more than 2,000 units, so it's this amount plus $3,000 divided by four dollars contribution margin i need to sell two thousand five hundred and thirty five units q now if you want to prove this you can prove it just go through the computation if you're interested um let's do it anyway so so i want to, to let's see if i do um two thousand five hundred and thirty five times ten this is my sales so this amount times 10 will give me my sales which is 25,357 minus minus my variable cost my variable cost is 2535 times 6 so i'm going to do this 2535 times 6 that's 15210 that's 15210 minus minus my fixed cost my fixed cost is 3000 my fixed cost is 3000 So, okay, let's do this. So, I have revenue of, let me just move the, move the calculator here, revenue of 25357 
minus 15,210 minus 3,000 will give me a profit of profit 7,147. 7,147. Now, I have to pay taxes on this profit, so I have 7,147. So if I have to pay, there is two ways to look at it. If, if my tax rate is 30%, it means I'm only keeping 70%. I can multiply this by 70 to confirm my figure, 0. 0.7. This is what's left. I'm going to be left with approximately $5,002. Or I would say 5147 I have to pay 30% taxes, not 330 30% taxes, so let's look at it, 7147 times 0.3, I have to pay taxes $2,145 rounded, this is my taxes, therefore, if I take my profit, 7147 minus my taxes, 2145, it will give me approximately $5,002, so this is my 5000 after taxes so hopefully i showed you how you figure out your profit your profit after taxes after taxes basically what you do is you gross the figure and you would use that figure in the formula hopefully this is a good review for uh, cvp and uh, if you want to uh, you know i i'm gonna go real quick through the formulas here so basically let me just show you real quick here contribution margin make sure you know the contribution margin equal to revenue minus variable cost this is the contribution margin, total contribution margin. Contribution margin per unit equal to unit selling price minus unit variable cost. So CM equal to selling price minus variable cost. Or you could obtain the same thing by taking the contribution margin in total. So the contribution margin in total divided by the unit sold. So that's another way to get to the contribution margin per unit. So you'll take the total. This is, let me go back up here. You take total contribution margin divided by the number of units. You can also c c compute the contribution margin, which is equal to contribution margin per unit multiplied by the unit sold. So another way to compute the contribution margin is to take the contribution margin per unit multiplied by units sold. It's basically the same thing, the same information repeated. Contribution margin percentage or ratio, this is percentage or ratio, which is the contribution margin per unit, CM, divided by selling price, or the contribution margin total divided by revenue total. It doesn't matter. It's going to give you the same thing. This is, the, this is another formula that we worked with. You know, this is selling price times quantity equal to revenue. Unit variable cost times quantity of unit sold, that's the variable cost, and fixed cost is the fixed cost. So revenue minus variable cost minus fixed cost equal to operating income. Very good formula. I showed it to you. I derived it. Okay. Keep in mind the following relationship, which we covered. Okay. Also remember th those the following shortcuts. Okay. To find your break even in units, you'll take your fixed cost divided by the contribution margin per unit. To find your, your break-even in dollar amount in revenue, dollar amount, you'll take your fixed cost divided by the contribution margin percentage. Okay, again, those are basically quick and dirty shortcuts derived from the formula that I showed you. Now, if you want a target profit, it's very simple. It's basically the same formula in a sense. If you want a target profit, so how many units do I need to sell? So basically what you do, it's this is the break-even formula. This is the break-even formula, and you add to the numerator I'm sorry, this is the break-even formula. This is the break-even formula. This is the break-even formula. Then you add to the numerator your target profit. Remember, if your target profit, if it's uh, if they want net, then you have to gross it. If net of taxes, then you have to gross it. And I showed you how to gross it. So let's look, take a look at this example. Emma has a fixed cost of $2,000 and a contribution margin of 40%. So they're giving you the contribution margin percentage. What is Emma's break-even point in, in terms of dollar amount? Well, that's easy. You'll take 2,000 divided by 0.4. That's easy. Okay? What if Emma wants to make a profit of $2,000? Well, guess what? Then you will add $2,000 to the numerator. Okay? What if Emma wants to make a profit of 3,000? Now you add the 3,000 to the numerator in addition to the fixed cost. Okay? So let's remember the formula. Fixed cost plus target profit equal, divided by the contribution margin. So simply put, you will take 2,000 plus 2,000. So this is the fixed cost and this is the profit 
divided by 40% will give you a revenue of 10,000 if you make, if you want to make a profit of two of of 2,000 profit. If you want to make a profit of 3,000, you will take the fixed cost plus the profit divided by 0.4. Now again, the break even point is you'll take 2,000 divided by 0.4 and you'll get your break even whatever that break even is, which we're going to see it here. Your break even this is equal to 5,000. This is equal to the break even equal to 5,000. And this is CVP and a full um, on a graph. So if you just want to take, you know, just go over it real quick. Uh, this is basically the break-even point. How did we get to the break-even point? We figured out that we need to sell $5,000, $5,000, and here we are assuming those are the units sold. So if you take $5,000 divided by, 20, by the 25, you know your selling price per unit. So you need 25 unit to break even. Anything below 25 unit, anything you sell below 25 units, you are operating at a loss because you have not covered your fixed cost yet. And anything above 25 unit, anything above 25 unit, you are uh, you are selling at a gain. Okay, so the selling price here is just for the sake of this example is 200. The variable cost is 120. So the contribution margin is uh, slope. Yeah, the contribution margin is 80 dollars. Uh, 80 divided by a contribution margin. This is CM. This is the selling price. This is the variable cost. So if we take contribution margin divided by the selling price, which is 200, will give us a 40% contribution margin. Okay. So this part here is the 2000 is the fixed cost. Okay. Then the variable cost that you need to recover to cover before you make any before you make any profit. So you, before you make any. Um, before you make your target profit, whatever your target profit is, the profit will start here above 25 units. Once again, remember how to gross the, uh, if you want to uh, gross the, uh, the target profit or the operating income, you'll take the income divided by the tax rate. Okay, so if they want you to make a profit of 5,000 net of tax, 5,000 net of tax and the tax rate is 30%. It means you'll take 5,000 divided by 0.7 and whatever that answer is, I showed you earlier, this will be your gross. So you'll have to, your operating income will have to be more than, let me just do the, do the number one more time, compute it one more time this way. You have it in case you just forgot about it. Let me get my calculator. So 5,000, so I need to gross it, divided by 0 0.7, which is $7,142. Therefore, this is the revenue that I need or this is the profit that I need in order to get a net profit of 5,000 net of tax, okay? Hopefully this is a good uh, introduction of CVP cost volume profit analysis. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means email me or see me in class. If you're studying for your CPA or CMA exam, by all means study hard, it's worth it.